Hello. Welcome to the wonderful page of the Fertile Brains. Wishing everybody a very good evening from the Kingdom of Bahrain. Welcome to all the people who would be joining in. And I would like to begin by thanking the Fertile Brain team, especially Prasanna, who like a vibrant person, a lovely person, and I sometimes tease him and call him a sweetheart for inviting me to his uh, grant page. This was long awaited and I am so excited and I'm so, uh, so, so elated to share some of my thoughts on poetry and some of my poetry with the people who join in on this lovely grant page. So, dear ones, something that Fertile Brain uh, group and the page always uh, insists, and I think it's a very beautiful moment for a poet to share with the listeners and this beautiful platform that what does poetry mean to me? So I have uh, in my hand my first book ever, Gallery de Heart. And in a very emotional moment, I had written this poetry, which is titled, What's My Poetry? My poetry is the sound of my life. The sound that spells out the moments of love and strife. The decibels that sing of the highs and lows. The rhythm that goes fast and slow. The soulful renditions of the elations I felt. The melancholic tune of the setbacks that made me melt. The ragas that brought a swing to my undeviating ways. The rapture of the rock piercing the usual calm of some days. The pieces that replenish the incomplete pictures. The rap that amplified the flight of captures. It's a lyric that I now write on paper. So I begin this session from 9 p.m. India time till 9.30. I will be there sharing my poems and my thoughts with you. And as I had just announced that I just shared my views on what's my poetry, what is my poetry to me. Also, there are thoughts in a poet's mind when we write. And what inspires us? Who is our muse or what is our muse? Something happening around us, some political scenario, something which is very uh, heartfelt, issues on women, issues on people who are being trampled because of power, uh, of course romance, of course about the elderly, of course about the people who we meet on our journey in this uh, you, you, I call it literary venture. And those are some beautiful things that I would like to share. So coming to that, I'm just choosing another poem, which is very close to heart and which is titled My Thoughts. And at this moment, I would again, would want to wish a very, very warm welcome from me, Nivedita, and from Prasanna, and from the team of Fertile Brains to all the people who must have joined to listen to us and who would be listening to my session later in the week. So let me share my thoughts with you. My thoughts are my handbook, a manuscript that updates itself. Each page is a realistic fiction. Kaleidoscope of my life inked with emotions, words brimming with sensations. Stored there are many twisted tales, randomly hidden memories, attic filled with gibberish that only I can decipher. Some chapters tickle the funny bone. Others may leave you teary eyed. You will peruse a real imagery my life captured in words. 
written there are moments magical. Saga of my journey hitherto. I still have some empty pages to dwell on as life offers new mysteries to solve. And I'm sure it must be the story and feelings of every poet. There is miles to go before we sleep. Lots to write, lots to connect, lots to express. And uh, as I mentioned, that all poets get inspired by what happens around them. And I also just mentioned that I, at the moment, reside in the kingdom of Bahrain. Though I belong to the town of Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh in India. So living in an island, it's one of the pastimes over the weekend as you know, go near the sea, sit with family and friends. And very often we get to watch the beautiful sunset. So I would like to share a poem once again, very close to the heart, you know, like a mother. No poet can differentiate between this is my favorite poem or that is my favorite poem. But there are some poems which really become very close to heart. You love them, you nurture them. And that's how it is. And this poem is titled Sunset. And I dedicate this to my beautiful second home, Bahrain. I've been residing here for the last 19 years. And uh, yes, this is my second home. Sunset. Into the restful hours moves the bay. Myriad of stories it has to say. A clock chimes far away. Kneel as it's time to pray. Hues of colors in the sky. To their nests, the birds fly. The faded chirping whispers that this day was worth a try. The sea waves dance to a softer tune as a love saga will begin soon. In the vast arms of the sky, the sun shall swoon. The horizon turns a tad bit darker. Pardon me, because of the sore throat. The horizon turns a tad bit darker. The sun blushes a tad bit brighter. Slyly, the sea breeze smiles at the harbor as they are the only witness to that soft whimper. The darkness engulfs, it hides as the sun sinks but unites. To the passing hour, it foretells that I shall soon arise. So my dear friends, this poem has a bit of uh, romance. This poem has a bit of uh, talking about, in a metaphor, the end of day. You could call it the fag end of the days of life. It also talks about a hint of positivity wherein I have said in the last lines, the darkness engulfs, it hides. As the sun sinks, but unites, because I have made the sun sink into the arms of the ocean, and I am trying to portray them as a lover and a beloved. And to the passing hours, it foretells that I shall soon arise. So, dear ones, while I am in my session trying to share some of my poems, I am not a very full-fledged, very expert person to be dwelling in words and sharing with you. But it's just like every other poet and writer, I just love words. It's my affair that I have with the words and I just express what I really feel deeply within. So I just wanted to take this time now to also share and also ask you a question that sometimes all of us have gone through this phase where we say we are getting inspired and I hear I need to mention the very very precious platform of the fertile brains Prasanna is keeping all the writers and poets on toes by giving us beautiful prompts by keeping the poetic 
platform alive by having very often uh, poetic sessions, solo sessions and team sessions. When you all face a writer's block, some people will say, no, there is nothing called a writer's block. But to be honest, I am going through that phase right now that I'm being honest with all the listeners here that I haven't been able to scribble more than a line or complete a poem in the last two weeks. So do you really agree that a poet is that sensitive that the things around uh, your job profile, your job arena does affect you sometimes negatively and the words don't come out? Or do you feel that the bigger truth is that when you are going through a low phase in your life, that the words and the scribbles do help you to come out of your uh, low phase and you feel very connected to the world back again and they inspire you? Or have you gone through both these phases of life that there is a writer's block and then people like Prasanna and Fertile Brain come into your life and you feel less, yes, I am a poet, other than being a human, a wife or a husband and an aunt and an uncle or a grandmom and a granddad, but I am a poet and a writer and that is one of my callings. And I do have to stay connected to my words and I will keep writing and sharing it with my friends on some beautiful platforms like the Fertile Brains. And I will again, would want to reiterate my big thanks to Prasanna and the whole team of uh, organizing these beautiful sessions where one is, feels very, very uh, satisfied. One gets the, the satisfaction of sharing the word that we are able to write. So at the moment, I'm going back to the notes that I write on my mobile, like all of you. And I will just share something uh, once again with a bit of romance and a bit of uh, philosophy as we could call it. The last song of love. The day of judgment arrives. Are we ready to roll and jive? The tune is set, the heartbeats race. We look at each other and beyond. Though, still gaze in the oblivion. Do we still have the same opinion? Fingers entwined, the hearts unwind. Footstep. The rhythm is unaligned. Did we unlove what we loved? The lyrics are tossed on the tempest. It's not a duet, but a double solo says that. But for old time's sake, oh my lover, for the old time's sake, let's sing the last song of love together and keep upholding the marriage vows until death do a spot. Now one could interpret this poem as purely romantic, but when I was scribbling, I always call my poem scribble, and some of the people who really love me from the deepest corner of their heart, they have always like given me a reprimand to say that, Nibi, why do you call your poem scribble? Some of the poems are very heartfelt, they reach us, so don't call them scribbles, but I always insist that I begin with the scribble and maybe then it turns into a poem. So coming back to my poem, The Last Song of Love, it can be interpreted as a romantic poem, but it can also be interpreted as any kind of partnership between a diary and a poet, between two partners, between two people who have a relationship to say that before we do part, Let's at least one more time have this positive moment that we always shared before. This is my way of thinking. There can always be an opinion. And uh, let me also share uh, something that had once again touched a deep corner of my heart. And as by profession, I'm a teacher. And I'm an elementary school teacher, so I mostly deal with children aged between uh, 9 to 11. So if you remember, a very, very sad barbaric incident happened in the Texas. And I was deeply 
moved. I was deeply hurt. I was deeply upset and distressed. So as any other poet, my pen gave me solace. My words made me feel better. So I did scribble some lines about the Texan tragedy and the very popular newspaper in Bahrain called the Gulf Daily News did share my poem along with an article written by another journalist there. And my poem was well received. This is what I can tell you. So the Texan tragedy. The clock ticked away, uncaring, relentless. The uncanny silence of the classroom was creating a suffocating ambiance. The silence had a deep voice. The voice that spelled lonesome thoughts. The thoughts lingered on the empty chairs. The occupants of these chairs now just faces on a frame. A few minutes ago, chirping, cheering like tiny every phoners. Sharing innocent feelings, each one ready to share their stories. Stories about their family, pets, and superheroes. They happily regale and retell. And then a sudden monster arrived. Heartless volley of shells. Screams, loud noise, crying, and the silence engulfs the room again. The silence witness scarred faces scared faces. It heard rushed heartbeats. It saw the blood gushing from tiny hearts. The clock ticks away and tells me, how long shall the world wait to act? How long will we wait to see innocents die? How long will this silence last? How many more massacres to hear the distant thunder? And I, with these last lines of my poem, how many more massacres to hear the distant thunder would like to leave a food for thought for each one of you. If any of you has joined me and is a teacher by profession like me, if any one of you is a social activist, would you like to share a heartfelt note from this teacher and ask the world and try to create a kind of a social viral thought for each one who feels from the deepest corner of their hearts to say, how many more massacres, my friends, we are going to tolerate silently and let the innocent suffer because a few of us choose to remain silent. Could we at least move the world by our words? And uh, I will just take a few seconds to just calm myself and choose another poem to share with you. And by then I would like you and request you to dwell on the words that I just shared with you. And to just make the environment a bit lighter. There is a poem which was also written because of a prompt by another very, very active and a beautiful group. So, and it has some kind of a banter. It has some kind of fun to lighten the environment, which I just created because of my deep rooted thoughts. Let me lighten the environment now. So the title of the poem right now in my hand is Animated Texting. So now we know that we all deal with social media and especially the fairer part, the other half of the whole generation of the population, which who are women. We sometimes encounter some very funny moments when we are on social media and even on, in our poet groups. So do, with all due respect, please take my poem as just a heartfelt banter and a fun uh, and an exciting poem. And I hope it brings a smile to your face. This might seem like a rant from an agony aunt. The vagaries of social media can itself be encyclopedia. And to top it all now, my show on the Fertile Brains platform. Holy cow. Text 
savviness is the need of the hour. Light dependency on the signal and the tower. Text received by the offsprings is dissected as the opponent in a boxing ring. Misuse of images by your generation. La parents, you need some recapitulation. Oh, post this reprimand. I assumed myself to be updated and reformed. But the graduation hat was far from achieved. The autocorrect was next to prove my defeat. So turned do. Just turned Judy. My whole message was in jeopardy. The innovation of the texting abbreviations and the lingo fiesta. GM, HBD, ROFL, LOL, etc., etc. Quakey enough to wake Milton and Byron in their gravel bound siesta. Lo and behold, there is more. The umpteen poetry groups at all were causing much upheaval. Descendants of Adam, not so single and ready to mingle with a twinkle. Some emojis do come in handy here. Searches and for some snarls and sneers. The urge to mutate to the real world is high. Yet many of benefits which I can't deny. The connections and interactions with personalities genuine and elite. That make the living meaningful and complete. P.S. B.R.B. Till the morrow when I meet you once again on the Fertile Breads platform. I so wish that there would have been some smiles, especially from the other half of the population, which is all the women and ladies. I hope you smiled when you heard me say this poem. And I will move ahead and I will once again talk like a teacher and a poet, a hybrid of both. And I dedicate the next poem to people and children and some of my students who suffer from autism. So I feel deeply once again for this particular special gifted people because they are basically very gifted. So it's titled For the Blue Roses. The garden galor boasted of copious blossoms, shades of pink, tints of verdant, and there it was holding its own. The petite cerulean stood out amidst the hues, dainty blue petals, soaking in the morning rays, swaying in the gentle breeze, though azure, yet a rose, distinct in its character, longing for care and air, foraging for equal amount of manure. The flora was special to the grower. The creator had a purpose, for the blue rose and that he shall soon disclose. Till then, let's propose, let it grow and bloom at its pace, song bloom. Let it grow and bloom at its pace, song gloom. We need to understand them. We need to accept them. And we also need to accept the fact that they are very much, very much talented. It's just that their way of expression is just different. And as we live in the world and we accept every other kind of person, we need to accept each and every one, their choices, their way, the way God created them.
So friends, just another thought that occurred to me while I'm talking because I have these things displayed right on my work table here. What does a diary mean to a poet and a writer? What is its place? So leaving that thought and your um, opinion and your uh, sharing your way, how do you deal with your diary? What is your relationship with your diary? So my poem is titled, Me and My Diary. Me and my diary often have silent, scribbled conversations. Though that in reality is soliloquy. I scribbled on her core, she feels my sorrows. She soaks up the teardrops, she knows my guilty pleasures. She's the attic of my Pandora's treasures. She's the 3 a.m. friend I yearned for. My diary, my trusted confidant, sees through my opaque pages when pain pricks and prods. And as I suffer from dreptomania, she captures my flight and grounds it. I spill my venom on her. She absorbs it. Lying next to the pillow, does she wonder on my sanity? Have I reincarnated her papery limbs into a being? Or has this body of crisp paper solely, solely making me worth the living? Or has this body of crisp paper solely making me worth the living. I hope friends that my words and my feelings are reaching to you. You are able to feel my words. You are one with my thoughts right now. And before I proceed further and read out the last poem, and I would like to say that I've really enjoyed this conversation on the platform of the Fertile Brains. And I want to thank Prasanna and the whole team and all the members of the Fertile Brains who joined and were kind enough to take out time from the busy schedules and join me and listen to my renditions. So I'm going to recite the last poem Half an hour has flown away, I didn't realize. In Bahrain, it is going to be 6.55 and I'm sure it's going to be 9.25 for the people in India. So I'm going to talk about something precious and which is precious gold. And I will leave you with this thought and I will leave you with the, my poem for you to decipher what I wanted to actually tell you through my poem. Precious gold. As I crouched to ignite the embers in the furnace, the hot red flickers did ignite some private chambers of my heart. In retrospect, some shivers ran down my spine. A handful of throwbacks, a bag full of naivety, a heart full of pains and thoughts that do love to care. I am burning it all to reinvent myself and arise out as shiny gold. The gold that's precious but strong, gold that adorns but is something to hold on, highly prized to be handled with care, one that steps out to dare, will limit what I share and for who I care. I am now that precious gold. So the first lines of my poem were, as I crouched to ignite the embers in the furnace. Dear ones, I just chose this poem because we are all um, observing Navratri. Then we will be close to Dashera and we will uh, be burning the effigy. And at the same time, many of our elders have taught us that we do need to burn the negative thoughts within, the thoughts which take us far away from our goals. 
So my precious gold is that, that I'm burning those negativities in the furnace and I'm arising out as precious gold. And I do wish uh, that all the poets would be able to do, fight out the negativity, keep writing, keep shining, keep being the gold of the literary world and keep connecting with people and inspiring lot of other people. So dear Prasanna, it's been a pleasure to be on the platform. It's been a pleasure to share some of my poems which were close to my heart on your platform. And I thank you for this opportunity. And it's absolutely an honor and privilege to be a part, to be uh, uh, able to, you know, talk continuously for half an hour every poet and every teacher and every woman loves that. And thank you, Prasanna, for keep giving me a beautiful time on your platform. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs>